Welcome to Trigonometry Video Lecture for Section 4.5, Finding an Equation from its Graph. So in this video, we're going to go over how to find the equation for a trigonometric function based on looking at its graph and identifying its key features. And this should be something, this is an idea that you should be somewhat familiar with. If you think back upon some of the more basic graphs that you've probably studied before this course, like lines, for example, if I were to show you a picture right here, the graph of a, the, of a line, and ask you to find its equation, what you would start off by doing is thinking, okay, what is the standard form for the equation of a line? Usually you think of slope-intercept form. And can I identify the key features, namely M and B, by looking at this graph? Well, sure, B is the y-intercept. So I can see that the graph crosses the y-axis at negative four. And then m is the slope, which we know is the change in y over change in x. And we can think of that as rise over run. And so I can just count using a couple points on the graph. We go up four over two. You can use any two points. So it looks like the slope is 4 over 2, which is 2. And then putting it all together, now I can write the equation of the line and replace m with 2, leave the x in there, and then b is negative 4. Okay, now we're not going to be writing equations of lines in this section, but I just wanted to show you an example of the basic idea. You're going to look at the graph, identify the key features, and then fill that in into the appropriate equation. So let's think back what the equations for the graphs of sine and cosine are. So we have y equals a times sine of b x minus c plus d, or alternatively, we could use cosine. So when you look at the graph, you're going to have to figure out which is going to be a better choice, sine or cosine. Now, interestingly, for all of these, you could do either because they're just a phase shift apart, but usually one will be easier. So I'll, I'll explain that in just a minute. Okay, let's look here at the first example. Example 2a, find the equation of the graph shown. So since I noticed that at zero, the graph starts at zero, I'm gonna choose sine. Okay, that's gonna just be a little bit easier to work with. Now let's go through and figure out what A, B, C, and D are. So A represents the amplitude. Absolute value of A is the amplitude, excuse me. So we can see that A is equal to one. Now B, how do we find B? Remember, when we were finding the period, the period was equal to two pi divided by B, right? All we need to do is rearrange this equation, this relationship. That means the period times b is equal to 2 pi. So if you want to find b, you take 2 pi and divide it by the period. All right, so how am I going to figure that out from the graph? Well, one complete period is being shown here. It starts at 0 and it ends at 2 pi. So if the period is 2 pi, and b is equal to 2 pi divided by the period, then we have 2 pi over 2 pi, which is 1. So b is just 1. Again, c is 0, there's no phase shift, and d is 0, there's no vertical shift. So this was actually our good friend, sine of x. Nothing fancy happened to him. This is y equals sine of x. Okay. Let's look at another example. Example B. This time I noticed that the graph starts all the way down at negative three as opposed to in the center. So for that reason, I'm gonna choose cosine to represent this with the equation of a cosine graph. So we're gonna use A cosine BX minus C plus D. Okay couple things. I notice that the amplitude is 3 and also the graph starts at negative 3. So it's been reflected about the x-axis. So that means a is equal to negative 3. 
What about B? Well, first let's see what the period is. How long does it take for one complete cycle to be graphed? Well, we start at zero, we end at two pi, so the period is two pi. And we know B equals two pi divided by the period. So two pi divided by two pi, which is one again. If you can just do this step in your head, that's totally fine. Because if you think to yourself, oh, it's two pi, that's the normal period, so I don't have to do anything, you are correct. And that's it. So we could write this as y equals negative three cosine of x. Okay. Now, I did mention earlier that you could write this or represent this graph using sine, but you would have to include a phase shift. So notice here, if I thought of it as sine, it would be shifted pi over two to the right because sine does start at zero. It starts its cycle at zero when x is zero. So you could alternatively include a phase shift and then you wouldn't reflect it either because it's going up from there. So you have a couple options. Usually one is the most natural one, right? Who wants to do a phase shift if you don't have to? So I just always look at where it starts and is it easier to think of it in terms of sine or cosine. Okay, last one here, example C. So let's decide together. Do we wanna represent it using cosine or sine? Did you say cosine? Good choice, right? Because it starts up at the top at two, at its max value. Okay, so let's figure out what A and B are, and there's not gonna be a phase shift or a vertical shift. So amplitude looks like it's two, no reflection, so A is positive two. And how do I figure out B? Well, let's see. From one peak or one max to the next is one complete cycle, that's one period. So I can see that the period is equal to two pi over three. Well, I know B is equal to two pi divided by the period. So two pi over two pi over three, which is equal to three. So B is three. So now when I write the equation, I have Y equals two cosine three X. Okay, so that's it. In class, we're gonna practice some examples that include a phase shift, all right? Okay, let's look at a couple more complicated examples. Notice this one has been shifted vertically and some other stuff might be going on too. Um, I'm gonna use sine to represent it because it looks like when we're at zero, it's at the halfway point, at the middle, so sine would be a better choice in this case. So we're gonna say y equals a, times sine of bx minus c plus d. Okay, can we identify a? Well, it looks like the amplitude is three because it starts at one, goes up to four. So a is three. Now what about b? How long is the period? How long does it take to complete one complete cycle? Well, you can count from peak to peak or min to min or think about the five key points. There's one, two, three, four, five, and that's at pi over two. So that means one period is equal to pi over two. So B, which is two pi divided by the period, is gonna be two pi times two over pi, right? Multiply by the reciprocal. Pi cancels out and B is equal to four. So B is four. Now there's no phase shift, so C is zero. And then D is our vertical shift and everything has been moved up one unit. So D is one, right? Because now this is where we're treating the halfway point, the middle of the graph where the X axis used to be. So let's just put it all together. We have Y equals three times sine of 4x plus 1. All right, very good. And one more bonus example. Oh, this is E, right? 
got two bonuses for you today. Okay, so let's decide. Do we want to represent this graph using sine or cosine? Okay, it goes up to 2, down to negative 6. That's important to notice first. So the difference between those two is 8, which means the amplitude is going to be 4. I still haven't decided if I'm doing sine or cosine. Well, it looks like it's starting at the middle. So sine would work. We just have to reflect it. We can do this one both ways. Why not? Let's get fancy. Okay, so if I'm going to use sine, y equals a sine bx minus c plus d, I'm going to have to actually introduce a reflection. So I'll say the amplitude is 4, but a is equal to negative 4. So why am I saying that? Because notice if we start at the middle point, but instead we're going down, then that means the graph's been reflected about the x-axis. Okay, let's figure out what B is. So how long does it take to complete one period? We start at zero and we end at two pi, right? One, two, three, four, five. Those are my five key points. One, two, three, four, five. So the period is just two pi. That's standard. So B is two pi divided by two pi, which is one. There's no phase shift if I'm treating this as the graph of sine c equals zero and then d vertical shift it looks like it's been shifted down two units so d is going to be negative two right this is our new middle so putting it all together we could say this is the equation of y equals negative four sine of x minus two all right other option other option we could think of it as a cosine graph with a phase shift. So we know cosine starts at the top, right? At its max value. So I could think of it as cosine being shifted to the left, pi over two. I could also think of it as cosine being reflected and shifted to the right, pi over two. You choose. I'd say the less stuff going on, the better. So I'm gonna view this as cosine starting here. Okay. A is going to be positive for this time since we're starting at the top. So if we're going to use y equals a cosine bx minus c plus d, a is equal to positive 4. All right, b is still 1. The period is the same here in this case. Now for the phase shift, remember phase shift is equal to c divided by b and since the phase shift in this case is pi over 2 to the left that's negative pi over 2 i don't know what c is and b i just found is 1 so i'm going to replace that with 1. so that means c is equal to negative pi over 2. okay d our vertical shift is negative 2. That's the same. And now I'm ready to put everything together. So I have y equals 4 cosine. Now put some parentheses here. It's going to be x minus c, negative pi over 2, plus d, so minus 2. And then clean that up. y equals 4 cosine x plus pi over 2, minus 2. So that's how you deal with the phase shift. Okay, obviously, if you can just switch from cosine to sine and not have a phase shift, it's easier. So I would recommend doing that whenever possible. But other times you have no choice and you have to include it. All right, that concludes the lesson. Just keeping it short and sweet. And stay tuned one more video for chapter four. And then we're done with this stuff.